Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will show you my Arch Linux installation with Hyperland, the dynamic tiling window manager for Wayland. I will show you my configuration with Waybar, wallpapers and dynamic color schemes with Pywall and SWWW, Thuna, the file manager, web app integration, and a Windows 11 virtual machine with GPU pass-through via Looking Glass. Hyperland is a dynamic tiling window manager, meaning it handles the placement of windows automatically based on multiple factors. Hyperland is known for smooth and responsive animations when switching between windows, switching between workspaces and opening applications. I can tell you the configuration of Hyperland was a lot of fun and I've learned a lot and definitely possible for advanced Linux users. After releasing the last video about the installation of Hyperland, I invested a lot of time to configure the system that I will show you today. And you can find all the configuration files, all the dot files on my GitLab server. You can download it, you can clone it and you can customize it. In the first part of the video, I will give you a demonstration how my current Hyperland workflow looks like. And in the second part of the video, I will share some insights of my current configuration. And don't forget, if you like that video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Let's start. Welcome to my Hyperland desktop. You see, I'm using here a standard window manager a layout or a bar on top. And with SuperKey return, I can open a terminal and another terminal and another terminal. You see, this is the dynamic tiling that is included into Hyperland. This is very nice. You can move a window around with super key, left mouse button, and move it to another position. You can increase the width of a window with super key, right mouse button, and you can move it again around. You can switch to another workspace with super key two, for example, and go back with super key one. I can switch to floating mode with super key T and with the left mouse button and super key, I can move that window around. With super key control return, I open Rofi, my application starter, and I start Thuna, my file manager. With super key T, I bring this window to the floating mode as well. And with super key B, I start a browser. With super key T, I can bring it into floating mode and I can move the windows around. I can switch to the first workspace with super key one and back to three to super key three. I can change the wallpaper randomly, including the color scheme with pi wall by pressing super key shift W. And you see that a lot of colors have changed here on top in Waybar, the border of unfocused windows with super key shift w i can change it again and again and you see here the notification manager dunst is showing the file name of the selected wallpaper with control super key um, w i can select a wallpaper and it changes accordingly with super key one i switch back to the first screen and three back to workspace number three. Let's switch to workspace number four. You see here on top several icons in my way bar. When I click here, the application starter launches. Here I can open Outlook and Teams. When I need support from ChatGPT, I can click here on this icon. And here's ChatGPT. And when I need a Windows 11, virtual machine, I can click here on the Windows 11 icon and Windows 11 starts up with super key F. I switch into full screen mode and I'm here in Windows 11 with a GPU pass through from the host into the Windows 11 guest and have the full performance in all effects of Windows 11. And I can go back to Hyperland with super key F and I can open more windows. Also in the Waymar, the workspace indicator, the 
white dot shows the selected workspace. And here on the right side, the volume, the processor, the memory, the clock, and the power off menu also implemented with Rofi. When I press super key print, a print menu pops up and I can create a screenshot from a selected area or from the full screen. When I select selected area, I can select with my mouse the area where I want to have a screenshot from. As my file manager, I use Tuna with a nice GTK theme. You see when I hover over a window, the selected window gets a white border. The unfocused windows are lightly transparent and have a color from the background wallpaper. Let me share some of the insights from my configuration files for Hyperland. The first one is the most important one, the Hyperland conf. At the beginning, I set the screen resolution for my desktop. Then in the auto start section, I start with Hyperland Waybar SWWW init to set the wallpaper. Then the update script for my wallpaper yeah, that selects randomly a wallpaper from the folder wallpapers and create the color scheme out of it. Then dance the notification service and I set the GTK theme for my GTK applications. Then I import the generated color scheme from Pywall and in the window layout and color section, I use this color from the color scheme, in that case, the color 11, with the corresponding variable. The gaps in is 10, the gaps out is 20, border size is 3. And that means when, when I open another terminal, you see that the active color is white, and the inactive color is the color from the color scheme. And when I set a new wallpaper, you see that the border color is changing. Pywall is in my setups, in my configuration, always the key in making a desktop beautiful and flexible and not boring. The general window decoration, the rounding is 10, the blur is enabled, and the active opacity of an active window where the mouse, for example, is located um, is one. So no additional opacity. The inactive opacity is 0 0.9. So you can see the background. I'll give you an example. Now you can see the background behind uh, Tuna, for example, here in that case. And the full screen opacity is then, of course, one. So no transparency. The drop shadow is true. And animations are standard. Let me move that window here. This can be closed. Um, and then is here a special window rule. When I open a website as an application with Brave, it normally starts in the floating mode, but I do not want this. I want to open a web application directly in the tiling mode. And this is what I force here. So every Brave browser window will be opened in tiling mode first. For example, when I open here ChatGPT, you see it's in the tiling mode. And when I want to switch to the floating mode, I have to enter super key T and then I'm in floating mode with super key T, it's back in the tiling mode. So no special key bindings. This is something that you can completely customize to your requirements. Maybe interesting are the last two settings here with that I disable the Hyperland logo and the Hyperland splash screen that opens up in the default installation. The next file that I want to show you is the Waybar. Let's open the Waybar folder 
and you see here several files. The colors way bar is a file also generated from PyWall with a custom template and has been copied into the way bar config folder. Then the config file to set up the modules of way bar with the reload sh I can reload only the way bar. I have also a key command for this. Shift super key B reloads the way bar. So in case I would have changes and the style is the style sheet for designing and layouting the way bar. Let's open the config file. And you see here the um, configurations. And here are the modules left. Here are a lot of custom modules that I have defined to create here that clickable elements. Let me show you the chat GPT button. I have here a custom module and chat GPT is the name that I have defined for my custom module. And then I define the format. It's here um, a font awesome icon plus the on click event to open brave in the application mode for the website chat.openai.com means when I click here, it opens without the browser window. It's only the app. It's only the website. Yeah, you see, I use several font awesome icons. And for example, here for the workspace switcher, just a circle is my indicator and the color scheme will then be defined in the style.css. So it means when I switch to workspace two or workspace one, you see how that dot colors and it's white when it's the active work workspace and has one color from the um, PyWall um, generated files um, when it's in inactive state. Let's open the style CSS. Here it's important if you want to use another font. In my case, I want to use the Fira Sans Semibold. This is my preferred font. You have to add it here. And of course, font awesome for the icons. You see here on top that I import that colorsvaybar.css. This is a file that has been generated by PyWall. And if this is done, I can use the color values that are stored in the variables. For example, the 11th generated color is at color 11. When I reload a new wallpaper, you see how the color of the dots are changing. Grim is the tool that I use to create screenshots. And you see here the Grim command to create the screenshot of the selected area and here in option three, the Grim command to generate a screenshot from the overall screen. And I save the screenshot into the folder screenshots and give it a special custom name. Let me show you how I have integrated PyWall into my Hyperland. Open the file update wall as www. This command selects an, a random wallpaper from the folder wallpaper and generates the corresponding color scheme files. Then I import the color scheme file into the script. I copy the color waybar CSS that has been generated based on the wallpaper to the dot files waybar folder. And then I can import it, it into the style.css. And then I set this um, wallpaper with SWWW with a transition of 20 and the transition frames per second 20. And this generates a nice transition effect. You see, the wallpapers are fading into each other. And last but not least, you see it here on top, I sent a notification with Dunst. Let me show you the power menu that I open here with that click or with super key control Q. It's in the file power menu hyper. And you see here the options that I have defined for, for the Rofi menu. And the first option is to start sway lock to lock the screen. 
HyperCTL Dispatch Exit logs out from Hyperland and the system CTL reboot is rebooting the system and system CTL power off switches the computer off. You can download all the files from my GitLab server. The link is in the description below. Here in dot .files, you have access to the latest version of my Hyperland configuration. And also study the install sh and the install Hyperland script. In the install sh script, you find all required packages for your Arch Linux installation. In the Hyperland, you find all additional special Hyperland packages that you need to run this configuration. And this is the current setup of my Hyperland installation. I must say I really like how Hyperland is working and how the configuration can be done on Arch Linux. I really used Hyperland now in the last couple of days for my daily work and it's super stable and it's a lot of fun. More videos will come about Hyperland in the future where I show more details about the configuration. That means I have now two window managers installed on my Linux system on Arch Linux, the Xorg system Qtile and the Wayland system Hyperland. And I like both window managers a lot. On Linux, you will never stop learning. And that's also the case for me. I will explore a lot of more features of Hyperland in the future. And that's it for today. Have a great time and have fun with Hyperland.